वेलकम टू इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडियो विद डॉक्टर मोहम्मद ताहिर इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द सिज्मिक रिस्पांस कोफिशेंट सी एस व्हिच इज यूज्ड फॉर द कैलकुलेशन ऑफ बेस शेयर इन केस ऑफ इक्विलेंट लेटरल फोर्स प्रोसीजर ओके व्हाट इज सिज्मिक रिस्पांस कोफिशेंट सी एस सो वी कैन कैलकुलेट द सिज्मिक रिस्पांस कोफिशेंट सी एस बेस्ड ऑन दिस इक्वेशंस सो इफ द फंडामेंटल पीरियड ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर इज कंप्यूटेड so in that case the seismic design coefficient cs shall be determined in accordance with this expression cs is equal to sds over r over i and this cs should not be greater than the value obtained from this expression but it should not be less than the value calculated based on these expressions if we have the design category a b c and d so we need to use this expression and if we have the design category e and f then we need to use this expression to calculate the minimum cs value so we can summarize over here that the cs calculated by using this expression it should be less than this value but more than these two and here if we see these factors s d s r i s d 1 t s1 so we can define these factors over here so sds and sd1 so these are design spectral response acceleration so these are design spectral response acceleration in the short period so when we have the subscript d it mean design and s mean short period and s is actually spectral response acceleration so the sds means design short period spectral response acceleration and similarly sd1 spectral acceleration design and one is for one second so the design spectral response acceleration at a period of one second s1 is the mapped maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration at a period of one second and r is the response modification factor i is the occupancy importance factor and t is the fundamental period of the structure as we have discussed in the previous video that how we can calculate this t time period of the structure okay now we will discuss all these parameters one by one so first of all design spectral response acceleration so design spectral response acceleration sds and sd1 at short period and at one second so the design spectral response acceleration at short period and at one second should be determined in accordance with this expression so sds will be equal to 2 by 3 sms and sd1 will, will be equal to 2 by 3 of sm1 we have this spectral response acceleration graph so on the bottom side we have time period t and on the vertical side on the y axis we have spectral response acceleration in the unit of g so at short period when the t is equal to ts we will have the acceleration is equal to sds and at one second at the period of one second we will have the spectral response acceleration equal to sd1 so here this sms and sm1 are the maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration adjusted or modified for site class for short period and for 1 second respectively mean sms is for short period and sm1 is for 1 second and this m is actually modified for site class so if we see as spectral response acceleration m is for modified mean adjusted for site class and s for short period and 1 for 1 second time period so now we can define the maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration which is adjusted or modified for site class effect sm1 and sms so the maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration for short period and at one second adjusted for site class effect shall be determined in accordance with these two expressions so sms is equal to fa time ss and sm1 is fv time s1 so here s one and ss so s1 is the map maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration at a period of 1 second and ss is 
the map maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration for short period and this fa and fv are the site coefficients which can be determined by from this table 9.4.1.2.4a and b respectively so first of all what is map maximum considered earthquake spectral response acceleration so the sa and s1 sorry ss and s1 are determined in accordance with the section 9.4.1 the charts for spectral acceleration are given for the different areas in the ASCE code as well as the local code of the region so for any region the mapped values of spectral response acceleration are given for example here we have the map of Pakistan so for that map for different areas for example for the area of quota so we are given with the value of spectral response acceleration so what will be the spectral response acceleration at short period so for example it correspond to this value I mean its range will be 1.6 to 1.8 time g 1.6 g r 1.8 time of g and similarly for this for this green area its value is 1 to 1.2 so from here from this chart we can select the value of this spectral response acceleration ss and it is corresponding to short period at 0 0.2 second in the spectral response acceleration so it describes the maximum acceleration of an object in an earthquake and is measured in the unit g so actually this s is spectral response acceleration which describes the acceleration of an object during an earthquake event so we term this s means spectral response acceleration s s or s1 so if it is for short period so we will call it at ss and if it is for the time period of one second so we can write it s1 and then these short acceleration these mapped acceleration are modified for site class so then they become sm sr sm1 and then these modified spectral response acceleration are further modified or factor to cal calculate the design spectral response acceleration and then it become SDS so it is factor to calculate the design value of this spectral response acceleration so here we can summarize that we have three type of acceleration one is mapped maximum the other one is modified and the third one is design SS mapped SM1 or SMS modified spectral response acceleration and SDS is design response spectral acceleration from SS we can calculate SM and from SM we can calculate SDS to calculate the modified mapped maximum spectral acceleration we need the site coefficients and for that first we need to classify the sites so in case of hard rock we can classify that site as a class A and in case of simple rock we can classify it as B and for very dense soil and soft rock we can classify it as C and for stiff soils we can classify it as D and for soils with a shear velocity less than 600 feet per second and the penetration resistance less than 15 so we can classify it as E so here this Vs is the average shear velocity N is the average field standard penetration resistance NCH is the average standard penetration resistance for cohesionless soils and SU is the average undrained shear strength in top 100 feet so based on these geotechnical properties we can classify the soil as A, B, C, N A, B, C, D, E and F and if we are not given with the properties of soil so in that case we can consider the site class as D and based on the site class we can calculate the site coefficients to modify the spectral response acceleration and based on the site class and mapped maximum spectral response acceleration SS we can calculate the value of FA for example for site class D and SS 0 0.5 the FA value will be 
Similarly, the site coefficient Fv that is based on the site class and S1. For example, S1 is 0 0.3 and site class is this. So in that case, Fv will be equal to 1.4. So by using these two tables, we can select the Fa and Fv values. Okay, after that, the next coefficient is response modification factor denoted by R. So this response modification factor R is an empiric is an empirical response reduction factor intended to account for both the damping and the ductility. So to account for the damping and ductility of the structure, we can consider this factor R to modify the response of the structure. So for example, in case of bearing wall system, for ordinary reinforced concrete shear wall, the response modification factor will be equal to 4. So here this table also gives the overstrength factor, deflection modification factor. So we can also select these values. And but here for to calculate the seismic base here we need only this response modification factor R. Similarly, if we see over here, so for moment resisting frames, for steel special moment resisting frame, its value will be 8, and for ordinary reinforced concrete moment frame frame, its value will be 3. So based on the type of the lateral force resisting system, we can select the value of response modification factor R. Okay, after that we also need the importance factor to calculate the base shear or to calculate the seismic response coefficient CS and to select the importance factor first we need to define the occupancy category and the occupancy category is defined based on the use of the building. For example, a building and other structure with the occupancy or with a capacity greater than 500 people for colleges are adult education facilities so in that case the occupancy category will be three so we have actually four categories one two three and four and category one is a building and other structure that represent a low hazard to human life in the event of failure including but not limited to agriculture facilities certain temporary facilities and minor storage facilities so if we see the priority of these occupancy categories so these are less important this is its importance will be higher than this first category and the third category will be the buildings included in the third category will be more important than the two and similarly the buildings in the category four will be most important out of all these three categories so based on the importance of the structure the buildings are categorized in four categories the buildings can also be divided in the seismic use group according to ASCE. So ASCE divide the buildings in seismic use groups based on the occupancy, categ occupancy category. So all structures shall be assigned to a seismic use group 1, 2 and 3 as specified in the table corresponding to its occupancy category determined from the table 1.1 as we have seen in the previous slide. So based on the occupancy category 1, 2, 3 and 4 we can assign a seismic use group to the structure for example a building in the seismic design for example a building in the occupancy category 3 so it will be in the seismic use group 2 similarly a building in the occupancy category 4 will be in the seismic group 3 okay once we have assigned the seismic use group to a building so we can calculate the occupancy importance factor i so the occupancy importance factor I shall be assigned to each structure based on seismic use group in accordance with table 9.1.4. So according to this table we can assign the importance factor. For example a building in the seismic use group 2 it will have importance factor of 1.24. Okay next is seismic design category A, B, C and D. So these seismic design categories are defined based on the design spectral response acceleration and seismic use group. For example, if seismic design spectral response acceleration is between 0 0.33 and 0 0.5 and we have seismic use group 2. So in that case, seismic design category will be C. 